We have worked on a plan. A plan to shape the future of Maastricht University. A plan based on our vision and our experiences over the past 40 years. We are very proud of this plan, particularly because it was created by us, by students for students, by staff for staff. We looked back at the previous strategic program, in which we introduced three broad themes. Quality of life, learning and innovation, and Europe and a globalizing world. We have considered what we want to achieve over the next four years, in our curriculum and in our research, where our strengths lie and how we can take things to the next level. In the coming years, core, Collaborative Open Research Education will be our central focus. CORE aims to increase the interconnection and integration of multidisciplinary education and research. We engaged in an active dialogue and ensured all sides were heard equally. We built bridges and found solutions. We are proud of this plan because it shows what we stand for. We are a young university with many qualities with a committed staff and ambitious students. We want to mean something for each other and for the world in which we live and work, together. Because the community is at the core. I think this was my cue. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Without taking too much time, we want to give you some impressions of our strategic program. And the first is coming behind me. It is education. What not? All right, very interesting. Um, <laughs> community at the core will give you four highlight presentations today that really focus. You will later get our strategic program to take home. And the first speaker I would like to introduce is Rolf van der Velden. Rolf van der Velden is professor at the School of Business and Economics. And he is the director of the Research Institute in Education and the Labor Market. He was also the chair of the think tank on education, and he will give you a summary of what has been put into the strategic program in this aspect. Thank you, Martin, for the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, Earth is a task garden and heaven is a playground. And what I like about this quote is that it expresses the idea that if you do something with passion, it's not a task anymore. It becomes play. And that's why in the think tank, we conceived of this idea of an academic playground to represent the university. And now this picture may not be the kind of picture you have in mind when you think of a university. A more traditional picture of the university would look something like this. And um, this picture gives you a couple of implicit messages. One is that it is male-dominated. Another one is that these people are doing very serious business, discussing important matters. I think both of these messages are still true today. It is still male dominated, and we're doing serious and important things. But I think that this picture, even at the time when it was taken, does not do justice to the essence of a university. The essence of a university is that it is a place where students and staff can follow their passions, where they can develop new ideas, 
where there is a, an environment which stimulates creativity. Um, and the concept of an academic playground represents exactly that. That's why we wanted to take that up as one of the elements in our education philosophy. That doesn't mean that we renounce problem-based learning as a core principle. On the contrary, we think that problem-based learning is what made this university famous, and it will be and remain the trademark of this university's uh, education. But we need to complement it with this idea of an academic playground. And one of the ways to do that is by integrating research and education again. As Martin already mentioned in his introduction uh, speech, these two functions of universities have drifted apart. Um, and I think it is time that we integrate research and education again. And that means that from day one, students should also be involved in research projects, not just in the final year of the study program, but for, uh, from the first year onwards. We need to enable students to work on research projects in which they can apply their skills and knowledge um, on themes that are relevant for themselves, but all, also relevant for society at large. Um, in projects in which they can meet with students from other faculties so that they can develop their interdisciplinary skills, but also to meet with stakeholders outside um, in order to solve the big problems that society is facing and which requires creative problem-solving skills. Another element of our education philosophy is innovation. And like all innovation, educational innovation is a core activity. It requires collaboration, it requires an open attitude, it requires an integration of research and education. And with the foundation of AdLab and similar, similar facilities, uh, open learning labs, we achieve exactly that, a place where people can work together and exchange ideas on how to improve um, uh, our education process. And last but not least, education quality is about the quality of our teachers, especially in a university like ours, which is very teacher intensive. It is the passion of teachers which inspires students and which improves their learning outcomes. And so we need to create the conditions in which we can optimize the teaching skills of our staff. I would like to end with this picture. Um, in a way, in the think tanks, we had an easy job. We had, to, we had a couple of meetings, we had to come up with an advice for the, for the executive board. Um, but we also realize that the hard work is yet to come. It will take five to 10 years to fully develop and implement the ideas that have been put forward into the strategic program. But it was also our experience that we met a lot of enthusiasm about the ideas that have been developed and about the underlying core principles. I think this is the enthusiasm that we need to, um, to go on. And, to, to keep, and, and the challenge will be to keep that, that enthusiasm alive. I'm pretty certain with the qualities of our staff, we will be able to do that. Thank you very much. So this time the timing is right, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This was education. Now the following pitch is given by Ron Heeren. Ron Heeren is a university professor at our university for uh, molecular imaging, 
He's also one of the directors of the M4I Institute, which will be opened later this week. And he was responsible as the uh, leader of the think tank research. Ron here. <laughs> Thank you very much, Martin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk research, Pecha Kucha style. So, what is research? It's a young investigator taking on her curiosity and taking up tools to look beyond the horizon to see something which she has never seen before. Being observed by yet another observer, figuring out the societal aspects of what she's doing. Or in other words, her father taking care that his daughter doesn't get caught by lions. Research is also about bringing people together. And this is a perfect example where on top of a Swiss mountain, researchers from a variety of disciplines share their passion about medicine, biology, mathematics, physics, trying to solve big problems and having fun doing it. Why is it so important that we bring researchers together in this collaboration? Because we can feed on each other's ideas, on each other's knowledge, taking knowledge and information from one discipline, feeding it into the other, and actually accelerating the cogwheels in our brains to actually pick up where others have left. And we need to do this not in a closed environment. We need to do this in Maastricht, but not in the walled city, such as you see here. But we need to drop those walls, drop the walls between the disciplines, and actually open up so that knowledge can freely flow. And if we have knowledge that is flowing from one discipline to another, we can establish this. We can use the passion, we can use the information, we can use the knowledge, we can use the experimental results of our researchers to make our research heart beat faster and faster and faster. Research is also a key element in the strategic plan in the concept of research education, and that is not new. Rembrandt already painted Nicholas Stolp doing an experiment where he was doing research education. And that is exactly what we're going to try and do with our new strategic program. And one of my heroes has something to say about the work we're trying to do uh, in this new strategic program. But you've got to stop and think about it to really get the pleasure about the complexity, the inconceivable <laughs> nature of nature. The inconceivable nature of nature and its complexity. That is exactly what we're trying to study here at this university. We're trying to put our resources together to study how the world around us changes, how our deserts become inhabited. And this, inhabita this inhabitation actually is caused by man and the world around us changes. How glaciers disappear, how do we understand that? And it's not only about understanding the world, the big world around us, but also the small world around us. And how do we do that? We do that by crossing bridges. We do that by bringing, for instance, the School of Business and Economics into the School of Faculty, Health, Medicine, and Life Sciences. Now, that's an unusual bridge to cross. But it brings together the two parts of our campus here in Maastricht. And that is crucial that we cross these bridges. We also have a big environment surrounding us. The Brightlands campuses, where we have all different research expertises that we can use to enhance each other's research. Whether it's big data, whether it's health medicine and life sciences, or whether it's new materials. Because research, as we know it, is really in our DNA here at the University of Maastricht. And we embrace that diversity of different research topics. We also do it in a manner where we add one strand to this piece of DNA in the triple helix approach. Government, university, and the businesses. Because these businesses are crucial to what we're trying to establish and roll out our knowledge. And this knowledge comes from the center of the world, Maastricht. <laughs> yeah, you agree, right? Because we've linked with dual degree programs from places all over the world. And this is our strength, and this is what we thrive on, and this is what we will build on in the future of our research. Now, we have something unique here in Maastricht, and that is that we are intimately coupled with what the National Science Agenda says. We can do research in the personalized healthcare. We can do research in the social sciences, and we can actually look at regenerative medicine, and all of that is in the heart of what we are doing as a nation as well. To do this, we actually use our infrastructures. 
We use our infrastructures properly, but we have to take care that we do it in a balanced manner. Not in the Guernica, but we actually balance fundamental research, applied research, and actually use the dynamics that we can generate this in this new environment where we build new labs. New labs that actually bring together infrastructure that is unpaired in the world. Open infrastructure, open innovation, open research, collaborations all throughout the campuses, all throughout our faculty. I think that is at the core of this community. And the community, ladies and gentlemen, is you. And I hope that you share my passion for research. So that reason, I want to end with something that I think is the ultimate expression of passion. And that is a kiss. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, as we move on with our voyage through the new strategic program, the next topic is internationalization. It goes without saying that Maastricht also in the future will be a very international university. And this was also one of the topics that the think tanks have discussed, and this is prominently featured in our strategic program. It's my pleasure now to introduce Alexandra Rosenbach. Alexandra has been a student at our university, has then carried on devoting herself to work as an international policy advisor for the executive board and has been instrumental in laying out and executing some of our international strategies. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexandra Rosenbach. much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are a globally linked European university, and I think that all of you agree when I say that internationalization is a core feature of our institutional DNA. So internationalization will remain an important topic in the years to come, and I would now like to talk you through some of the elements of our new strategic program in this regard. International student recruitment will remain an important topic for us. As we heard earlier, we have many study programs that have an explicit European or international focus. And these programs attract students and staff from all over the world. So our international marketing strategy and student recruitment policy should reflect this. We aim for a well-balanced intake of students from the region, from the Netherlands, from Europe and beyond to optimize our international classroom. We will also look into options for innovation, such as virtual open days. Staff and student mobility are also key areas of our strategy. We think it is very important for students to go abroad, for instance, to undertake a semester at a partner university, but we also think that staff should be mobile. Now, academic staff usually visit partner universities regularly or conduct research there, but for support staff, it's not yet that common to spend some time abroad and we think that we should also further stimulate and promote this. For our students, there are also more innovative options than to just take on a semester abroad. They can also conduct research, for instance, do a marble project at a partner university, or attend shorter courses and do summer programs abroad. And we definitely want to stimulate and promote these options more in the years to come. We also want to look into more options for internationalization at home in this regard. Things like virtual mobility, where students here collaborate with students all over the world in e-learning and such projects. Our international networks and partnerships are also a key feature in our internationalization policy. We are a member of the Worldwide Universities Network, a global research university network, 
and a European network called the Young European Research Universities Network. We will intensify our collaborations with partners in these networks in the area of education and research. Moreover, we will also intensify our collaboration with partners in our immediate surroundings with your regional universities. Our campus in Brussels also has a crucial role to play. This should really be our embassy to Europe, our gateway to Europe. We want to stimulate study programs there, shorter programs, longer programs, maybe even fully-fledged degree courses once legal restrictions have been removed to actually really make our campus flourish. So we want to promote it more. We also really want to make use of our campus in Brussels as a platform for lobbying, for our public affairs strategy, to link more to EU policymakers and really use it as a meaningful hub. International classroom, which has been mentioned earlier, is a very important concept that we embrace and that we want to develop further. We think it's of utmost importance that our students get skills like intercultural competencies that make them very employable once they've graduated. However, this magic doesn't just happen by itself if you put all these different students into a classroom. We really have to facilitate this and we really have to stimulate it. So in order to achieve this, we will develop training and courses for teaching staff and students in the area of intercultural competencies. We will also conduct more research internally on the effectiveness of our internationalization tools and instrument to test whether they're effective and in what way they could actually be optimized. Our international community is also very important to us. We think that all international staff and students should feel welcome here and they should be integrated rapidly. We already offer quite a lot for incoming staff and students. For instance, language courses or buddy and mentoring programs. However, there is still some work to be done. We think, for instance, that our support staff could still have some more professional training in the area of languages and intercultural competencies to really optimize the services that we offer to our international students when they come in. So this is an area that we will look into in the years to come. Finally, we want to link our regional developments more explicitly to the world. As you all know, we have exciting things going on at our Brightlands campuses. New study programs, for instance, in the area of bio-based materials are developed and exciting research takes place there. We want to really connect it more explicitly to the international arena. International students will be attracted to these degree programs and we also think that there are ample job opportunities for highly skilled knowledge workers to come and work on our campuses. Last, but definitely not least, we will continue to be a very active and important player in the area of development aid and capacity building in the area of education, thereby making a meaningful contribution to societal developments on a global scale. Thank you for your attention. So, ladies and gentlemen, the final part of the strategic program that we want to present today is the interaction with the community or the communities. And that's the most complex part, because there's many aspects, like reaching out to refugees here in Maastricht, interacting with the city and the people in Limburg, and resolve some of the issues that are here in health, in, in the economic sector, in the, as we say in the Dutch, Samenleven. But it's also about interaction with the economic sector, how can we create new jobs here? And this will be the focus of the next pitch, and it will be presented by Professor Jan Kobbenhagen, who is uh, the director of UniVenture, the director of the uh, Knowledge Office, Knowledge Transfer Office, and as he is a man with many hats, also the CEO of the Brightlands 
Maastricht Health Campus. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jan Kopenhagen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Community at the core is about taking responsibility for the community. And not just the university community, as the previous speaker have, has elaborated on. It's also about taking responsibility for the greater community. And in a strategic plan, the university expresses a clear ambition to do so. Under the heading, connected with our communities, we can identify three main focus groups in the strategic plan. The Master University Medical Center, MUMC Plus, Brightlands, and society at large, both regionally as well as internationally. Let's start with the Maastricht University Medical Center. It goes without saying that Maastricht University will continue to collaborate closely with MUMC and joint areas of interest and strive toward further strategic alignment. And more joint initiatives will be developed and implemented, such as the Brightlands Agenda. And under this Brightlands Agenda, several triple helix initiatives are gaining momentum, all aiming to further develop the immersion knowledge economy. Initiatives such as the four campuses and our CANSS knowledge access programs focus on core themes that link the region's economic strength with UM's research and teaching. Over time, the Brightlands Initiative will provide a backbone for Limburg's knowledge economy and Master University will take an active role in that. And the third group to its Master University field of responsibility is society. UM will set up a variety of initiatives to support and stimulate social engagements among students and staff, like a student-run platform that will bring together various initiatives around social engagement. And wherever possible, social engagement will become embedded in the curricula or stimulated as part of extracurricular activities. Extending its responsibility to society at large, Master University will challenge both research and education to address the most pressing problems of today's society. It is an ambition the university shares with the Brightlands campuses. And in this way, Master University is turning into a third generation or a knowledge platform university. From being a provider of education and research, Master University wants to become an engine in the knowledge economy. And as such, it feels a responsibility to take part as a key stakeholder in the development of the arenas for research and innovation in the region. And it cannot do this alone. It will do so in a triple helix open innovation setting at the Brightlands campuses. As in order to reap the full benefits of high-level research, we need to connect research to entrepreneurs, companies, and the MUMC+. Companies and hospitals, they form the second strand of the triple helix, complementary to the university. And the third partner in achieving UM's ambition regarding society is the public sector, the province of Limburg and the major cities. They act both as a catalyst and a broker in bringing parties together, setting the agenda, and funding our ambitions. Knowledge platform universities, like the UM, turn to the local governments to assist them by focusing on the physical infrastructure as well as the intellectual infrastructure. And with its full support to the Knowledge Access and Brightness Campuses initiatives, the province of Limburg has demonstrated its willingness and ability to do so. And during their formative years, the campuses have already demonstrated that the triple helix approach yields results. Let me give you one example. In recent years, the University, the province of Limburg, and MUMC Plus have established a world-class molecular imaging infrastructure for precision medicine and innovative diagnostic. An infrastructure that is unsurpassed globally. M4I, a state-of-the-art molecular imaging center. The ultra-high field MRI scanners of Skinexus and a range of advanced imaging equipment and enabling technologies. All these imaging facilities, from nanoscale to macroscale, allow us to visualize anatomical, physiological, or molecular changes in biological tissues. With the help of these diagnostic tests, we can select the best possible therapies, all in the best interest of the patient. So isn't the time we also start promoting this region as a Brightlands imaging valley? And by doing so, we might even attract even more world-class scientists to the region. The development of a Brightlands Imaging Valley is just one illustration of the many ways in which a triple helix approach can safeguard our innovative power and address some important challenges in healthcare. And Master University is a key player in this ambition. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that in the past few minutes, I've managed to stress the importance of Master University's strategy 
to the Brightlands Triple Helix initiatives and vice versa. Each one strengthens the other in its ambition to address and hopefully resolve a number of pressing social challenges. And that is something we can all benefit from now and in the future. And I wish Masters University and in fact all of us every success in implementing its strategy. Thank you for your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a glimpse at our strategic program, only short, and you will get more information about the extensive program which guides us in the next years. I should say that I'm not only looking forward to implement it, not only with my colleagues, Rihanna Lecher, Edmund Voss, with the deans and the faculties, but also with the many, many people that work in the think tanks, with the participatory body, our supervisory board, because I feel if we can do this as a group, as a community, we can be more effective. So having said so, it's the end of this writing process, is the end of presenting this program, but now the real work starts. Remember this little photo from Rolf, where we really need to put it together and implement it. And this will be our challenge, but it will be a good and positive challenge for the next year. And with that, I would like to thank our four presenters, which really stand for a whole group of people who have worked on this. And I have only to say now that I will now move on to again to Rihanna Letchard for the next segment of our program. Thank you.